Here's a small fact. Assuming that you get 8 hours of sleep every day, you spend approximately 1440 hours of your childhood attending school from pre-K to 12th grade. That's already 13% of your childhood. Without calculating the amount of time, you also spend doing extracurricular activities, homework, or attending classes for the SATs or your driver's license. We are born into a world where learning becomes a priority. Absorbing knowledge since the day we learned how to walk, talk, and well, basically breathe. Our parents and teachers have drilled it in us. We have to get better. We have to keep going. For me, school stopped being fun once I entered middle school. Oof. Looking back, those were some hard years for me. My dad went away for a year when I was in sixth grade to help out with the family business. So things intensified at home when my mom was left with all the responsibilities of taking care of my younger brother and I. In elementary school, I was always known to be a quiet, polite student, but I had a creative, introspective, and silly streak that others picked up on. I used to sing Celine Dion songs as I swung on the swing sets and was a pretty bold romantic when it came to confessing my feelings to the boys I liked. True story, I chased my first crush on the playground when I was only in preschool. Yeah, I guess I started out pretty young, huh? But as I entered middle school, I began to feel like an outsider. I didn't make any friends in sixth grade, and my friends from elementary school barely talked to me because we didn't have any classes together. It was the year I really slipped through the cracks. I felt like I couldn't tell my mom what was going on when she had her own struggles she was dealing with. One night, I broke. My relationship with food changed for the worse, and I felt like my body was rejecting reality. Everything was a blur after that. But this isn't a story about my eating disorder, and I'm better now because of it. I have stories of the good, the bad, and the extremely awkward, which I hope we can all relate to on some level. I've always considered the cafeteria as a jungle. It's loud, chaotic, and just all around overwhelming. So initially, I ran away, especially when I didn't feel particularly enthusiastic about food. I'd lock myself in the girls' bathroom until the bell rang and I'd come out. No one noticed I was away, and staying incognito made me feel safe. Not to mention, I also had to worry about who would judge the food I brought to school. My parents always cooked me Chinese food, so if I were to bring leftovers for lunch, I'd pray that it wasn't something too out there. If you watch Fresh Off the Boat, Eddie Huang and I share those similarities. The good news is that I didn't have to hide outside with the janitor like he did. The following year in seventh grade, I broke out of that phase when I finally made friends. Woohoo! But because of that, if I didn't share the same lunch period with them, I'd be devastated, worrying who I'd sit next to that day. I was scared of being a loser again. But if there's one thing I learned, getting over yourself is the best thing you could ever do. At the end of the day, it's just supposed to be a room where you can take a break from the books and refuel your body with nutrients. If no one wants to sit with you, it doesn't reflect that you have poor character or a boring personality. It means you're still adjusting to your new environment, and that's okay. Now, let's talk about lockers. Okay, if you have enough time to actually use your lockers in between your classes, you are one lucky person. When I was in high school, I had to walk between two different buildings. So, I had to carry this ginormous backpack that had all my books. Note, I was only 5 feet 1. I looked like I was going backpacking every day. But in reality, I was just someone who developed a lot of back pain and died on the inside. I always dreamed of accessorizing and decorating my locker because it seemed cool at the time. I wanted to be someone who had the trendy magnets, cool band posters, inspirational quotes, and notes from friends who would tell me to have a great day. But it never happened. If you're feeling lame about your locker, don't beat yourself up over it. Everything is going to seem like one giant competition in school, and it'll feel tempting to do everything in your power just to fit in. But consider your locker as a tool to express yourself honestly. 
Are you scared of putting up band photos others might disapprove of? Or you love the color pink when everyone is into black? I'm going to tell you the truth. It's okay to like different things. And if someone else is going to make you feel crappy about that, that's their insecurity showing, not yours. Wow, who knew Locker Talk could get deep real quick? Bottom line is, yeah, school is going to be an awkward time for everyone. Even the queen bees, football players, and class president. We are all susceptible to embarrassing moments. Instead of ruminating over them, just remember that it won't always be like this. The teenage acne you have, that chemistry test you failed, and even your current crush. 10 years from now, that will all change. So in the meantime, learn to laugh things off. You've got this. What are some of your embarrassing school stories? Let us know in the comments section below. For more helpful content, be sure to also subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.